was a big story this week about a 14-year-old Muslim American teenager in Texas who uh, built a clock. He's a science kid, and that's great. Can we show the clock? Okay, and the people at the school thought it might be a bomb, perhaps because it looks exactly like a fucking bomb. <laughs> this story broke on September 15th, and uh, by the following day, President Obama had tweeted about it. He said, cool clock, uh, Ahmed. Uh, br want to bring it to the White House? We should inspire more kids like you to like science. It's what makes America great. And um, ever since early on, especially after they showed a picture of the, of the clock itself, um, I've been kind of, I found the story just to be fishy. It didn't make a lot of sense. It didn't add up to me. So um, I've been doing everything I could to read everything I could find about this story and to uh, watch everything that's out there. It's already been said. And um, so I'm going to try to bring some things together and see if I can make some sense out of this. I'm going to start by going back to Bill Maher. This kid deserves an apology, no doubt about it. They were wrong. But could we have a little perspective about this? Did the teacher really do the wrong can thing? I, yeah, can I? Let, can let me, I, can I go ahead. Because I've talked to the kid. Go ahead. Right, he's from Dallas. And I've talked to the people in the school district. The kid is a super smart kid, science geek. We talked about science. But while I'm talking to him on the phone, as I ask him a question, tell me what happened, because I'm curious, right? His sister. Over, the, over his shoulder, you can hear, listening to the question, giving him the answer. So I don't know all the details of what happened, but what I do know, when I talked to him about science, when I talked to him about magnets, when I talked to him about creating things, he was very, very engaged. He's, great. He's a great kid. He's a no, great kid. No one's doubting that. What we're well, at, I'm just asking about perspective. First of all, the teacher, did she do, she, I don't know. No, 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 yeah, okay, no, but uh, part two to all this. So I talked to, this is once removed, right? So I talked to people in Irving, Texas that uh, worked with people in MacArthur, the school. And I said, what happened? What did you hear? This is, again, secondhand. He said the kid, Ahmed, took the clock, put it in the first class. Teacher said, great, looks great, looks great. Kid picks it up, takes it to the second class. Teacher said, okay, whatever, it's great, it's great. Ahmed didn't really comment on from what I heard. Takes it to the third class. Same thing. Then he got to a point, again, secondhand, where one of the teachers, an English teacher apparently, said, look, you got to put it in your backpack because it's going to make some people nervous and it's making me nervous. And again, secondhand, he, didn't, he wasn't responsive to it okay. at all. So, he, so it took six classes right. before anything happened. So I actually think that Mark Cuban uh, handled this better than anyone else there on stage. Um, Bill Maher did more to talk about um, Islam than I think was actually necessary for this uh, story. It might have actually been counterproductive the way that um, Bill Maher was talking about it, although he's, he's right in part. Um, but I do want to correct one small thing about um, Mark Cuban. He, um, the, the information that's come out has said that it's actually, um, it was, I think, his first period class that was his engineering class. And the original story was that um, he said that he wanted to show it to his engineering teacher. But then, as Mark Cuban said, he didn't just show it to his engineering teacher in um, first period, he went on and showed it to all of his teachers. He just was showing it to everyone. And then when he finally got to the sixth period, he um, the alarm went off during uh, sixth period, his English class. And that's what prompted his teacher to, to um, confiscate this thing and send him to the principal's office. And then they called the police and all that. So um, there's much more going on here than, you know, what it looks like. I mean, why would he have set the alarm to go off in the middle of his English class. Also, his engineering teacher gave him, um, advised him not to, um, not to show it to anyone. He said, you know, probably you just want to keep this to yourself, keep it in your backpack. The kid um, ignored all of those um, warnings. It's also strange that he would even show this to an engineering teacher to begin with, because um, this is not an engineering project. I mean, engineering is, is fundamentally, it's about design, and he didn't design anything. So um, he didn't he didn't build this clock. He didn't create this clock. He didn't invent this clock. He repeatedly referred to it as his invention when he was um, interviewed. I'll play part of that clip. My hobby is to invent stuff, and I do a lot of stuff. For example, inventing inventing this type of stuff right here, transformers. You you get what I'm saying here. But I made a clock. It was really easy. I wanted to show her something small at first. But they took a wrong point of it and they saw it was a bomb, so I got arrested for a hoax bomb. He said it was really easy, and um, on the website he said it took about 20 minutes. And um, the reason it was really easy is it, the process 
probably looked something like this. Let's look at that clock one more time. So here it is. Um, you can see it looks very similar to what was in the previous uh, video. It was uploaded by a YouTuber showing what Ahmed's uh, so-called process of invention uh, would have looked like. Um, he just took it out, took a manufactured clock that was built in a factory somewhere. Um, it's a mid-80s model clock that was taken out and put in this box. And he added some stuff to it. You can see there's some netting on the bottom and, and some kind of a little bag of um, white powder, which I, I looked around the internet and tried to find out what it was. And I, I don't know what it is, but it's um, it's this package has been described as vaguely sinister by one of the um, websites that's covered this. And I think I, I have to agree with that. I mean, this thing, I look at this and I just think, you know, he... He wasn't assigned this um, by his engineering professor. This is not something you would have assigned as an engineering professor. It's um, because there's, as I said, there's no design involved in this. He just took it out of a took a, took a clock apart and put it in a box. And uh, it's fastened to the side. You can see it's uh, screwed to the back to to prop up the uh, the display. And then he uh, takes it around to all of his classes shows it to all of his teachers. The first teacher tells him, um, it's cool and all, but you know, keep it in your backpack because it's, you know, it's gonna, might freak people out. And why did you make it? I made it to impress my teachers first week of school trying to start <laughs> new with them and show them I have a passion for engineering. Okay. And you brought it to school. Yes. And you showed it to him and was he impressed? Yeah, he was impressed. What did he say? He was like, it's, I like it. I'm impressed, but it kind of looks like a bomb to me. He says something right here that's really interesting. Check it out. I closed it with a cable, so because I didn't, I didn't want to lock it to make it seem like a threat. So I just used a simple cable, so it won't look that much suspicious. That is unbelievable. I can't believe this kid is getting away with this as well as he has, given what he just said right there. Now let me just read it back right, real quick. I closed it with a cable because I didn't want to lock it to make it seem like a threat. So I just used a simple cable, so it won't look that much suspicious. So it won't look that much suspicious? <sighs> so when he was creating this thing, he was thinking all along what he needed to do to make it look more or less threatening. In other words, he knew from the get-go when he was building this thing that it had the potential to look like a threat, right? <laughs> so, I mean, if that doesn't tell you something about what's going on here, I don't know what could. Let me just play it back one more time. Because I didn't, I didn't want to lock it to make it seem like a threat, so I just used a simple cable. So it won't look that much suspicious. Another thing about the, the cable, he said he, he wanted to lock it. I just used a simple cable um, because he didn't want to lock it to make it seem... Why would locking it make it seem like a threat? Why would, um, why would, how would the teacher even know if it was locked? Um, and instead of having it just be, um, this thing has a key lock, so I mean, instead of it just looking like a normal little mini briefcase with a lock, it's got these weird wires sticking out of it because he just, he didn't use the lock that came with it. He wanted to add stuff to it. Who, who would do that? Why would you ever do that? I mean, there's, it's, it's bizarre. And, you know, one person wrote, this is like the opposite of the desired effect. If you wanted to make something like this look more sinister, you'd, you'd bring, you'd make wires, you'd add extra wires sticking out of it. So it just made the thing look that much more bizarre and suspicious. And you know what makes the thing look suspicious? It looks suspicious because it looks like a hoax bomb. It looks like something that a kid would make to be um, a prop in like a low budget movie you know, class production where there's like a, a ticking time bomb like in 24 or something like that. That's why it's suspicious, not if it's locked or not. But um, anyway, let's go back to Bill Maher. We, but we cannot blame young Muslims around the world. No, what but, no, but all the kid did. had to do was engage with the teacher, and he didn't. That's the part that was missing. It's not, I agree with you, right? We're making an issue because if it walks like a duck, talks Wait, like a duck. Well, responsible for we're not, not him. Responsible to, for that. Not no, him. He, he was wrong. He got arrested, but he didn't. All he had to do was talk to the teacher. But he didn't. Okay, so that's what he. Wait, let he me let me let me read the rest not. of what this person said. He said, 
uh, he's talking about the fact that he was from Irving, Texas. He said, Irving is only 25 minutes from Garland, where the Draw the Pro Pro Prophet Muhammad contest, remember that a few mm -hmm. months yes. ago? Yes. Was attacked, as it was, by ISIS sympathizing gunmen in May. The message is clear. If you are a Muslim, anything you might, might do, might, anything you do might be a plot to destroy America. No, the message is you can see why they would err on the side of caution. Absolutely. Because only 25 miles away, somebody did try to kill people. I can't believe I agree with you, Bill. <laughs> but it's, but it is I, I, I actually, I actually agree. And by papers. the way, we have zero tolerance in school for things that are suspicious. And, you know, right. maybe that doesn't look like a bomb, but it doesn't look like a clock. And if I'm a teacher... What if it had been a bomb? Uh, yeah, exactly. And the, uh, So the teacher is supposed to see something that looks like a bomb and go, oh, wait, this just might be my white privilege talking. All right. <laughs> right. <laughs> I sure don't want to be politically incorrect, so I'll just let it go. You know what the problem yeah, in this country, exactly. one of the problems we got, is this willingness to take sides in a fight like this without knowing what the hell happened. And it, it is amazing. Everybody goes right to their battle stations. I'm with the minority. Yeah. The minority's right. Those teachers are wrong. How do you know? The, the I wasn't there. You weren't there. The problem is I don't that, know. Is this, that how do you know? <laughs> no. Chris. Everybody's an expert. It's all cartoon. Everything's a fucking cartoon. No. Okay, so two points on that. Um, what if there actually had been a bomb? I mean, like what Bill Maher was saying, I mean, basically better safe than sorry, right? I mean, there's a reason why we have uh, zero tolerance policies for things like this is that if anything looks like there's a chance that there could be some kind of, you know, mass violence um, event, they have to take it seriously. So, I mean, imagine that there had been something. Imagine that he had had a bomb or some other kind of weapon, and if teachers had rep repeatedly no noticed things that seemed a little off and they had done nothing, and then a bunch of kids had died, imagine the outcry then. You know, imagine what, imagine the lawsuits of, you know, oh, you know, you saw all the warnings and you didn't pay attention. So, you know, right now we can pretend like these guys are guilty of some kind of horrible error, but really they're just being wise. I mean, I think they're just doing the right thing, these, the teachers and the police. And then um, Chris Matthews, I don't think I've ever seen him swear before, but um, he's right. I mean, everybody, and what happened in um, liberals, I mean, I'm, I consider myself a liberal and I, um, I'm really disappointed in the liberal reaction. I think that um, all our skepticism just apparently went out the window in the name of social justice because people are so quick to want to signal how virtuous they are that they forget about principles like, um, you know, skepticism and reason and evidence, um, that's, that's pretty distressing. Take a look at what passes for skepticism and critical thinking when it comes to issues like this. Hey, speaking of racist paranoia, Muslim teen arrested for making a clock. Last week, a high school freshman in Irving, Texas, was arrested and led away in handcuffs for bringing a homemade clock to school. Some folks at the school were supposedly concerned that the clock was in fact a bomb. A completely reasonable reaction that surely had nothing to do with the fact that the student in question is a Muslim immigrant from Sudan named Ahmed Mohammed. There's a difference between being vigilant and being a bigot, being hateful, being intolerant. There's a difference. Now, the teacher in Irvin, Texas, got it wrong. The authorities got this wrong. They took it too far. Now, many people here on YouTube know me for being anti-religion, anti-Islam, which I am. But this story here has nothing to do with being anti-anything. This is a kid that has aspirations, dreams of becoming an engineer. And that was foiled. This kid is embarrassed. I stand with Ahmed Muhammad. I feel a little bit silly, and I feel a little bit like I'm talking down to my audience to have to be teaching people in the year 2015 about basic logical fallacies, but what these guys are doing is called affirming the consequent. And it's a logical fallacy that I'll put up on the screen that um, one example that's been used that you might be familiar with would be something like, um, if it rains, the street will be wet. This, and then someone says, okay, the street is wet. And then from that they say, okay, then it must have rained, right? And the reason this is fallacious is that it ignores other possible reasons that the street could be wet. Right? Somebody could have gone out there with a garden hose. Somebody could 
dump a cup of water on the ground. Okay, there are other reasons. And you can apply this same thinking to um, the Islamophobia um, and the racism um, and the all of these different types of uh, paranoia. People are just, they see Islamophobia and racism everywhere. Okay, so what they're basically doing is they're saying, um, if something like this, if the teachers and the and the police are Islamophobic and or racist, they will be more likely to uh, arrest and treat badly um, Muslims, right? So if the teachers and police are Islamophobic, then they're more likely to arrest a Muslim, right? Then the Muslim was arrested, so then from that you conclude that it must have been Islamophobia or racism or both, right? This is obviously wrong, okay? There are millions of other reasons why somebody could get arrested other than Islamophobia and racism, such as bringing a hoax bomb to school, okay? I mean, this is to just jump to the conclusion that it must be Islamophobia and racism. This is not how you do skepticism. This is not how you do critical thinking. This is a rush to judgment. This is people not waiting for the evidence to come in. Um, and once people have taken a position, it's it's really hard. It's really hard to, to switch back. You know, so people, um, especially with liberals and conservatives right now, everything is so factioned that um, people take a side and then they just attack each other. And it's very hard to, I mean, I'm getting a lot of pushback. Like I, I, I consider myself a liberal and most of the websites I would normally visit would be liberal websites, but they're just not covering this the way that I think is appropriate. Um, the conservatives are actually the only ones covering this in a critical manner. And it's probably because it's people like Pamela Geller, who was famous for the um, drawing a Muhammad thing. And um, so she's, she just doesn't care, you know, but um, most people don't want to be branded an Islamophobe or a racist or whatever. And so they'll, they're, um, so they don't put things like this under the, the light of critical scrutiny. They just, they just don't think that hard about it. They just, it's so much easier to just go along with the narrative of you know, Islamophobia and racism. Let's take a look at some of what happened in response to this event. So Ahmed, I'm so happy that um, you're coming out on top. And I just want to say, by the way, you are my ideal student. A creative, independent thinker like you is the kind of person who should be becoming a physicist. As a theoretical physicist, I would love it if you took an interest in the mathematical side, although you're clearly very adept with your hands and at building things. So I hope, I hope you'll think about theoretical physics. If there's any possibility that you can come visit us at MIT, I would love to give you a tour of the Center for Theoretical Physics and the Kavli Institute for Astrophysics. And I'm hearing from my former advisors at Harvard College that they would love for you to come to the Center for Astrophysics, the Harvard Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. So I really hope that you'll come visit us in Cambridge. It would be fantastic to have you. You are the kind of student that we want at places like MIT and Harvard. I just don't buy what I saw in that interview at all. Um, the woman comes off as insincere to me. She seems like she can barely believe what she's saying. She's looking down like she's looking at notes. Um, she's being way overly um, kind and gracious and um, complimentary to this to this kid. Who um, I'm assuming that the people at MIT had a chance to at least review what he'd actually done. That they'd had a chance to see this clock thing that he that he made. Um, and they would have known right away what was going on. I mean, this is MIT, okay? So um, they, there's no way they're looking at this kid like he's some kind of whiz kid um, genius who needs to have scholarships to every school in the universe. Um, and remember that Obama also invited him to, um, to the White House, and he did it so fast. I mean, it was like this, this story broke uh, on the 15th, and I think it was... Um, the 16th, the Monday, um, excuse me, Wednesday morning, he was on it. Obama was like, come on down. And I, I'm going to have to speculate here okay, because this thing, this thing hasn't come together all the way. So I'm going to have to just um, do the best with what I've, what I've got. And um, the kid's father is, um, he's, he's not just some guy. He's actually run for um, the president of Sudan uh, twice, apparently. He's, um, he's an Islamic activist. He's done uh, debates. He's, he's done work on things like is combating Islamophobia. I mean, this is basically his job to root out and find um, instances of racism and, and Islamophobia. So this is like, it's reasonable to, to think that maybe there's something going on, that maybe there's some kind of an agenda here. And um, I think that Obama knew that. I think Obama knew that 
from the start. And I think that the reason he would tweet so soon is that he got out ahead of it and he was able to drive the narrative in the way that he wanted to to take it, which was um, an anti-Islamophobic um, direction. And um, let me show you one reason why that would be so important right now. Okay, this man, I like this guy. I walk on white plains. Amen. Okay. We have a problem in this country. It's called Muslims. We know our current president is one. Right. You know he's not even an American. We need this first question. Certificate this is man. First question. But anyway, we have training camps growing where they want to kill us. Mm -hmm. That's my question. When can we get rid of it? We're going to be looking at a lot of different things. So you'd have to be brain dead just about to uh, not notice the um, racial tensions in America right now. They're at a, an abnormally, things are abnormally tense. And Trump, I mean, the anti-Mexican stuff, the anti-Muslim stuff, the anti, I mean, it's just, it's xenophobia and racism and it's, um, you know, we're the good guys and American exceptionalism and all this kind of stuff getting drummed into their head every day. And um, it's creating um, an atmosphere of hate, right? And so this is, and then when something like, um, when something like this Ahmed event happens, it has the potential to cause massive, massive problems. I mean, if it goes the wrong way, I mean, if Obama doesn't get on top of that story right away, we don't know how that's going to develop. But he, he controlled it and he took it in the way he wanted it to go, which was the most constructive direction for it to go. It was actually the, the right strategy. I think it's the best strategy for dealing with the so-called Muslim problem is to um, kill him with kindness. Basically make America the best place in the world for a Muslim to live. Make it impossible for them to hate us. I mean, they need to understand that America is going to stay a secular nation that guarantees religious liberties to everyone of every religion. That's important. We need, we're going to keep our constitution. But beyond that, okay, we're not going to have Sharia law. We're going to have secular courts. But beyond that, we can make America a great place to live for everybody. And if we just do what Obama did, Obama reached out immediately and he, and he, he did the opposite of what a Republican would have done. A Republican would have just, um, they're all about strength and, and showing them who's boss. And Obama, you know, he's showing that it's not always about being strong. Sometimes it's about being smart. And this was smart. And what about the thing with um, MIT and all the other cool stuff? I mean, he got um, a big bunch of uh, gifts from Microsoft. I'll put a picture of it up on the screen. Um, why, why are they reacting like this? Well, you know, there are a couple different possibilities. I'll point out the ones I think are most likely. Um, I think it's possible, although I'll never have any way to know, that um, the Obama administration or someone high up in government might have contacted MIT and actually um, clued them in on the, the strategy, the right way to handle the situation. And I want to tell you why it's important to have um, this, this unified effort from so many people around the country um, <laughs> It's, it's really brilliant the way that happened. And it could have been just an accident. It could have been just, um, it all could have just been, um, you know, people working individually. But when Obama reaches out to this kid, he's the highest public official in the land, arguably the most powerful person in the world. And he reaches out to this kid after he has this rough day in class. And he says, you know what, you know, hi, uh, you know, it's like, Ahmed, you know what? I know you're, the president knows your name and he's going to send you a tweet personally and tell you that, you know, he wants you to come visit. And it's like, it's this message of acceptance. And Ahmed is just, Ahmed is, is not, a, in this case, Ahmed is a symbol. He is symbolic of Muslims. He's, he's a symbol of, um, of Muslim people. And when the president sends a message like that, it's a message of acceptance to Muslims. He sent that tweet. It said, um, we're happy to have people like you um, getting into science. People like you, what does that mean? Does it mean children? What does it, or, you know, what does it mean? I think, I think it means Muslims. I think it probably means Muslims. Okay. So that's really cool. And then to have MIT and Harvard reach out and do the same thing. It's, it's now it's the president, the highest official in our country, and the most distinguished institutions of higher learning are saying, we welcome you, you know, Muslim, Muslim young man, we, we welcome you. We accept you. Okay, that, that's a powerful message, and that's, that's why they did it. And I, I mean, I don't know if it was orchestrated. I think it would make a lot of sense if it was. But, um, and then the other stuff like the gifts from Microsoft and stuff like that, you can just think about that as, as just part of their marketing budget. I mean, they send this kid, you know, $5,000 worth of, of gifts or 10 or whatever it was, and um, that's like awesome PR. That's like, you get opportunities like that. I mean, that's just 
more companies should do stuff like that. I mean, you can pay for a $2 million ad in the Super Bowl, and um, arguably it's much less effective than sending this kid five or $10,000 worth of, worth of stuff. So that's how I think of that. So the way this was handled uh, by the president, I think, was excellent. And I think that um, MIT and the other um, Facebook and all the other companies that reached out to this kid, um, whether it was coordinated or not, whether this was orchestrated by the you know, the administration, um, it was, it was the right way for it to go because, um, events like this have the potential to, um, make the situation, the racial tension in this country much worse. And so what, you know, this thing gets blown up like a balloon and eventually it'll go pop. And what, uh, what Obama did was to let some of the air out of that balloon. And, um, and that's, that's brilliant, you know? So, I mean, you got Trump, you got guys like Trump saying he, um, wants to build a wall. I mean, you know, somebody should ask the guy, you know, if it's uh, if he wants the wall to be bigger or smaller than this uh, than the Gaza wall. You know, I mean, we we know how awesome that wall is, how popular it is, how much they love it there. So, um, bigger or smaller, Trump? What do you what do you say? So while we have these careless politicians going around um, saying stupid things and pissing off huge groups of people recklessly, um, luckily someone's around to clean up the mess. Bill Maher was mentioned in the beginning of this uh, video, and he's been in some hot water over this. Of course, he's constantly branded an Islamophobe and a racist. And uh, Richard Dawkins is another person that the media loves to, um, they, they just love to bring him down. I mean, how I don't know how many times I've heard, you know, the new atheists are just, you know, they're garbage. And Richard Dawkins is losing his mind. Look at this guy. But if you look at his tweets, I mean, he's just saying similar stuff to what, like I've been saying, he's saying, um, this story doesn't add up. This kid called it an invention when it's really a hoax. And, you know, the kind of reactions people were giving him were saying, you know, oh, he's 14 years old and you're just an old bigot, you know, but I don't think that's fair. So what can we learn from this? Um, one thing I want to point out is that this story really is not about Islam. It is about this particular kid and this particular family. And, you know, I, I don't really like to do a video like this where I have to speculate so much because I am um, really all I'm doing is I'm making um, reasonable inferences based on the evidence. I can't paint a picture that's going to make anyone um, draw 100% conclusions. Lots of people are going to disagree with me, I'm sure. But um, there's enough evidence there, I think, to be highly skeptical of, of this kid's uh, story and what's being spun in the media. Um, the whole Islamophobia and racism narrative um, is masking what's actually going on. But this isn't, like I said, this is not really about Islam. This is just about these people. They don't represent Islam. They're just a couple people who may be the father's making some kind of a move to um, gain political clout in his home country or here or to try to advance um, his own purposes. Um, but that doesn't mean really anything about his religion. I hope people don't demonize this kid. I hope people don't go after him too hard. I mean, he is still just a 14-year-old kid. Um, I, I think I'm guessing that the truth will come out sometime probably in the next week or two. Um, what I'm hoping is, is he'll come clean. What I would do if I was the police is I would offer him and his family immunity if they just admit what actually happened. Just offer them, tell them you're not going to prosecute them if, you just, if they just come clean about what's really going on. And maybe that'll get them to um, to admit that there was um, some other intent behind this, you know, so-called clock. Anyway, I didn't even have, I don't want this video to go on forever. I didn't even include all the things that I could have included. But I think this is fairly comprehensive, and so I'll leave it at that. And thanks for watching.